Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com. It is all brought to you by Plains Coffee and plainscoffee.com. Promo code BRAVES, get your 10% off. He is Zach Blackerby. I'm Ben Taylor and Charlie Morton, Old Man River, absolutely rolling in the freezing, cold, rainy, windy city of Chicago on the quote-unquote south side, which... On a side note, by the way, if you haven't seen the pyrotechnics at the Cubs game on the north side, what a it's joke! Absolutely sad, and they should be embarrassed. Rough. <laughs> they got those from the Dollar General sparkler store to let the players enter the Goodness field. Gracious. <laughs> no, but uh, Charlie Morton did what you want him to do, right? Yeah. Five and two thirds innings, gave up just three hits, six strikeouts. Like you take that from him every single. Outing, you you take that and look. It's it appears that uh, the White Sox are not very good. <laughs> They're about to be zero and four. As we record this, we're in kind of the second delay. We're like, okay, yeah. you know, whatever. It's it's nine to nothing in the top of the ninth in the second delay. They may call it while we're doing this. Who knows? But Zach, if they come back from nine to nothing, I will eat crow on here completely. I have yeah, zero sure. issue with that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, me too. Me Plus, too. it makes for a great pod if that happens. We'll do. I've oh, got this will blow up if that happens. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah, Charlie Morton, he got in a little trouble in the first. That was his biggest issue. He loaded the bases in the first and got up a bases loaded jam with a, a couple of strikeouts, and so they didn't do anything. <clears throat> and then it was almost like you could feel it in the air that that was their only opportunity to get to Charlie Morton today because after that, he just dealt. He, yeah. I mean, he was – um, and, and things got a little wild. I didn't realize this. They said the stat during the game, just about everybody he's ever hit with a pitch has been with his cutter or his curveball that dives in on lefties and hits people in the back. left. Like they were like, it's going to, if it hits anybody, it's going to hit him in the back left foot. Next pitch, he hits the guy in the back left foot. And I was like, okay. And so then they were talking about it in the booth and they said, that's just, it gets away from him. He holds on to it a little yeah, too long. Sure puts too much spin and that's they can't get out of the way of it because it looks like a strike coming in and then it just breaks off and hits him in the foot. So uh, that got him in a little bit of trouble in the first. He loads the bases. He gets out of it with ease. He had a couple of balls hit fairly decently off of him. But other than that, nobody really pounded the baseball uh, off of him. And he was able to locate it. And he had, as you said, with the strikeouts, he had six, which for a 40-year-old dude's pretty good. Yeah, which once again, I mean, this is a guy, it's like, you, you're not asking him to be an ace. You're asking to be the fourth or fifth guy in this rotation. And when he can do that, that's exciting. Uh, then you and Lindsay have talked a ton about the depth of starting pitching in this organization. When, like, you look at all the guys that are in Gwinnett, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what the plan is over the course of the season. Like, is Charlie Morton the plan yep. all year long? Like, I, I don't know. It would make sense either way, right? But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, hats off to Charlie Morton um, yeah. doing exactly what he needs to do. As I said with Chris Sale yesterday, you get your five-plus innings out of Charlie Morton or Chris Sale, yeah. you've done your job. If you it, And especially if you can get those innings with the lead because then they're not taking the loss, and that's exactly what's taken place over the last couple of days. So, right. uh, again – Let's not read too much into it because the White Sox, judging by the crowd, are going to be absolutely atrocious this year. Uh, and I understand that everybody goes, well, it was windy and it was rainy. People weren't coming in. Well, it was windy and like rainy. It's also 1 o'clock in the afternoon on a, on a yeah. Monday as well. So, But even with the sorry pyrotechnics on the north side, the Cubs game had more people there. And it was the same time as the White Sox Braves game, so maybe that's where everybody went. Maybe people didn't go to the White Sox game, but it a uh, good showing out of Charlie Morton. The good news is, is he never looked fatigued. He never looked like he was in trouble. As a matter of fact, when they came to get him at the end of five and two thirds, he was smiling when he came off the mound, as if to say, "I'm happy with that. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good with it." Yeah, it's like another one in the books, baby. Let's yeah. go. Let's <laughs> and, go. And he leads with a six. He leaves with a six nothing lead, so he's got to feel good about that. Now, as you said, we're recording. It's nine to nothing as they're in a rain delay in the ninth. And yeah. if they do come back from that, then we'll just get on here and eat. Yeah, there are other issues. There, there's another storyline that has emerged <laughs> if that happens.
Uh, I'll talk happens. about the hitting here in a little bit, but I do want to thank Plains Coffee. Go to plainscoffee.com. Promo code BRAVES. Get your 10% off by going there. And, of course, they're not going to roast those beans until you make your order. They're going to ship them fresh to your doorstep. Also, if you like teas, they have teas. Flavored coffee is our thing. The wife loves that kind of stuff. Cinnabon, pumpkin spice. Yeah, even year-round. Doesn't have to be fall for scent. Well, I guess in Chicago, maybe they need some pumpkin spice. It looked absolutely atrocious up there. They need something. That's yeah, for sure. <laughs> need something. It's supposed to snow tomorrow, of all things. Uh, got mocha, chocolate, hazelnut, pecan pie. Plus, as I said, you can get your sample packs. Plus, you can get those teas that you may want instead of coffee. All up to you. Just go to plainscoffee.com, promo code BRAVES, get 10% off. I had mentioned this the other day or yesterday when I did the, the last after the game pod, and I said that it has to be a – for in order for this team to be successful – because they took the loss yesterday. They have to hit top to bottom. They have to put the ball in play and have hits. Yeah. And as of the ninth inning, which meaning unless there's a pinch hitter that goes up there and goes over, every player for Atlanta, every starter has got at least one hit on the day. Acuna, one for four, had a couple of walks as well. Never tried to steal a base. Uh, two for four was Ozzy Austin Riley with a home run and also went two for four. He gets his first bomb of the year. Olsen, one for five. Ozuna even gets a hit. Harris, the second, gets a hit. Uh, Arcia gets a hit, which was a key pivotal one because it went in the gap and ended up scoring two, so he gets a couple of RBIs as well. Darno gets a hit. Kelnick gets another hit, extending his hitting streak to four games. And so uh, let's see if he can keep that going as he keeps uh, getting in the lineup and even as a pinch hitter throws a hit out there. So, Zach, we've said it over and over. You've heard Lindsay and I talk about it. talk about it. You've talked about it. Top to bottom. This lineup is probably the best in Major League Baseball. Yeah, you can't breathe. I mean, there's no, at no point can you can you breathe and relax and say, okay, this inning's going to be a little bit easier. It doesn't exist. Mm. It doesn't exist, especially with the way Kalanick is, is hitting the baseball right now. And what we've seen, and we kind of saw this with Atlanta today, that second time through the order for starting pitchers, it's going to be brutal. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely brutal, kind of in that second or third inning, depending on you know how the game goes up to that point. But there's just going to be teams that struggle because they don't have guys that can go through this order twice. And and you and Lindsay talk about it a ton. And once this this lineup gets into the, your bullpen, it's over. Oh it's yeah, over. Uh, they came back from the rain delay. And one of the first pitches that Austin Riley sees, he parts over the fence from the guy that comes out of the pen. This guy's thinking yeah. he's going to come in, just throw it down the middle, try to get out of the game really quickly, and a ball gets hit 400 feet on him all of a sudden. So you, right. you, and, and you're right. It's that second time through today. You would have thought that that pitcher was an all star. Nobody was able to hit anything very well in the first three innings. But as soon as they started coming back through the order, they ended up pounding the ball. As it, it, it was even brought this into play, the Braves put 14 balls in play today, and 13 of them were 95 miles per hour or higher. It's insane. Now that was before Austin Riley's home run, and also before a couple of base hits. So right. it's probably up to around 16 or 17 in play, and probably 15 or 16 that are 95. So that's that high velo that we talk about, and ends up and see that's not even counting. Uh, Harris ended up hitting a liner that almost took the pitcher's head off and they measured it at 94 miles per hour. So even when they're not surpassing 95 miles per hour, they're still right there in the 90 plus range. And that's from your six hole hitter. That's not even one of the guys that is like leading the team. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, starting pitcher for the White Sox today was Chris Flexen. And I think it's safe to say that he was not Flexen no. on the mound. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> just an observation that's all you it's spelled correct. different it's spelled it, different it is it is it, it is and uh you know what's funny is it didn't get any better for the next guy that came in is he ends up giving up a couple of earned runs and then uh even towards the end of the game an earned run and then uh dominant leon he's the guy that came out of the pen after the uh after the rain delay that gives up the home run to austin riley and only you know faces one batter so it's it's amazing what this braves lineup can do and mm -hmm. how quickly they can do it. How they went from zeros in innings one, two, and three, even swinging at bad pitches, yeah. to it's almost like they have some sort of cheat code with the iPads that they look at where it's like, okay, this is what I'm expecting to see next time. And then they see it, and then they put it in play. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're going to see. Good lineups, great lineups against average pitching. 
Yeah. And I mean, nothing against Flexen. I mean, he did what he could, but like, I don't think any of these guys for the White Sox are really set up to succeed this year. Right. right. And that's nothing against any of these players. It's just, this is not a, this is not a team or an organization that's interested in winning right now. That's mm -hmm. why, <laughs> that's why AA went in and got a bunch of good deals uh, from some former White Sox guys that, that are now on this roster. So, I mean, they got I, Nicky I, I Lopez. I kind of expect this to happen, you know, the, the entire series while they're up there, Ben. Well, they got Nicky Lopez, who was a Brave, who didn't play and had an atrocious second half of the season. Like He came in and had a few hits to begin with as a pinch yeah. hitter, but once he started having a feeling regular, it was awful. And now he's a starter for the White Sox, and he wasn't even seeing the field at the end of the season for the Braves. Right. Right. So that, that lets you know the talent that they have is yeah. who the Braves didn't want are now playing for, as, as odd as it sounds, both the White Sox and the Red Sox that we'll see a little bit later on in the year as well. So mm -hmm. uh, they're getting all the second team uh, Braves kids that are, are Braves players that are going up there and playing. So it should be interesting. I'm like you. I fully expect we didn't do a prediction, but it's after sweep. the win it's today. Yeah, it's almost embarrassing if it's not, especially with the crowd and what you see and how it looks, looks like the White Sox don't care. Looks they, like they called it. So going to stay at nine nothing. They're going to call it good. Uh, that that What's uh, that they called it. I think that's pretty smart. That's all you were doing was risking getting somebody injured. I think even the Braves were looking at starting to platoon some guys off the bench to get them to go out there in the ninth. Yeah, I can't to... imagine Chicago wanted to keep playing this. Like it doesn't benefit them either. No, because the Braves were coming back to the plate. <laughs> like nine nothing. It could be worse. Yeah. It could be worse. <laughs> it's it's like wiffle ball out there. And I'm glad to see that they're calling it because. Uh, in that uh, that last inning where uh, Ronald went first to third, he almost slid down sideways, rounding second base. And that's the last thing we need is somebody yeah. like a Ronald going all out in a 9 nothing game and twisting something he doesn't need to twist. Yeah, on April 1st, it's like we've got a long way to go. Let's yeah. just wrap this up. That would yeah. be absolutely awful. Speaking of wrapping it up, make sure you go to PlainsCoffee.com, oh, okay. promo code BRAVES. 10% off, it gets wrapped up and sent right to your door. We'll have another post-game pod tomorrow. You guys hang out for that. Who knows who will join me? We will see, but hopefully it will be good news. I'm predicting the sweep. Zach's predicting the sweep. Negative Lindsay will probably be the only one that says that we go two of three in the series, so we shall see. <laughs> not even here, man. Not even here. I know. Well, you're the one talked about his chimney yesterday, so I'm not going anywhere near that. So <laughs> Yeah, I got a text from him about that too, by the way. <laughs> He's Zach Black for me. I'm Ben Taylor. Go to bravestoday.com for all of the written work. There'll be a recap posted shortly since Zach just said that the game did end. I'm sure Lindsay will be all over that. So you guys be sure and go and read that as well. Until next time, I'm Ben Taylor. He's Zach Blackerby. 